this is an introduction to distillation. So distillation works because there is a discontinuity in the concentration. So if you have a boiling liquid of a certain composition, the composition of the condensing gas that is in equilibrium with the boiling liquid is different. And in a boiling point diagram, so a diagram where you have the temperature on one axis and then the composition on the other axis, you, you can see here that you go in for the composition of the boiling liquid and you go straight up and a boiling liquid and a condensing gas, if they are in equilibrium, they have to have the same temperature. So you draw a horizontal line and then you find the composition of the uh, gas. If that gas is to condense, then uh, that needs to cool down to another temperature and that temperature you can read in the diagram as well. We will focus on continuous distillation. So we will have uh, three flows, a feed, a distillate, and a bottoms product. We will use F, D, and W to denote those three. And um, so we have moles per second in and moles per second out. Uh, and F, D, and W are then the total flows. And we have compositions. And we will use Z for the feed because the feed can be gas, but it can also be liquid. Uh, and we use ZF is then the fraction of volatile component in that feed. And XW will be the molar fraction in the bottoms product, and XD will be the molar fraction in the distillate. So try to do this yourself now. Make one total balance for the system, in equals out, so no fancy stuff just steady state uh, solution. So a total balance and a balance for the volatile component. Try that yourself. Okay, so what did you get? For the total balance, you should get F equals D plus W. Simple enough. What about the volatile component? Well, if you want to calculate how much volatile component you have in the feed, then you have to multiply the total feed with its smaller fraction of volatile component, so F times ZF. So the balance for volatile component becomes F times ZF equals D times XD plus W times XW. In order to do calculations for distillation, we will need three different things. We will need to be able to describe the phase equilibria. So for example, making boiling point diagrams. But more importantly, we will need to make an XY diagram because we will be using McCabe Teeler's graphical method to solve these problems. The second thing we need is uh, to find a good design. And in this course, we will use continuous distillation columns. There are other op options. We will look at them very briefly. And the third thing we need to do is to make mass balances and energy balances of these systems. And you have now been able to do a total balance, so balance for the total system, but we need to make that more carefully. Uh, so a continuous distillation column looks, looks like this. So down here there is a reboiler, so we heat down here, and up there there is a condenser. So it's hot below and cold above, and it's boiling all over. So in all places it boils, but the composition of the liquid that boils is different on different levels. And we will focus on distillation columns where there are some physical contraptions uh, in the column, uh, physical trays that can be different kinds of things. There can be, for example, a bubble cap tray that looks a bit like this. But it can be more simple stuff like sieve trays, which is just a, a sieve, uh, or it can be a valve tray and yeah, different kinds of uh, constructions. And the idea with these trays is to increase the contact between the liquid and the gas. Our goal is to use McCabe Teeler's graphical method. And how does that work? Well, before we go into theory, then let's just dis describe very, very uh, shallowly how this works. What we will do is we will divide the distillation column into sections. And these sections are in equilibrium. 
And then we will use the XY diagram uh, to draw graphical solutions. So one important thing in the XY diagram is the system curve. So that's this, this curve here. And that's rather difficult to describe mathematically. So believe me, to solve an equation like, uh, like the one behind that is not nice to do by hand. Uh, you need a computer to do that. But if you have an XY diagram, you have all the solutions in there. And then we need to make mass balances. We need to make mass balances for what is above the feed. Uh, and we need to make a mass balance for what happens at the feed. And we need to make mass balances for what happens below the feed. And these will all look like lines in the XY diagram. And then we will need to shift between making a mass balance, checking uh, the equilibrium, making a mass balance, checking the equilibrium, back and forth, back and forth. And we can do that by drawing dra uh, triangles like this in the XY diagram. Things you definitely need to know in detail in this course is that you need to understand how the continuous de distillation works, the, the general design and the function. You need to distinguish between equilibrium stages and physical trace. You need to know about the reflux ratio, R, and the minimum reflux ratio, how, how low that can be, and what happens if you put it to infinite values and then you get the minimum number of equilibrium stages needed. You need to be able to understand mccabe thiele's graphical method and use that to calculate the number of ideal uh, stages to reach a certain separation, a certain xd and xw, if you know uh, the composition of the feed. Uh, you need to be able to calculate the optimum feed location, and you need to be able to calculate the energy needed in the reboiler and in the condenser. And to your health, there is this list of different uh, screencasts that you can look at.